Hey, what up? In this one, I'm going to show you how to create an AI chatbot using Anthropic's Cloud API. It's actually super simple and fun to make, and I feel like I might start making more AI apps with Flutter. Now, keep in mind, if you want to use these AIs, then you need to buy tokens or credits from Cloud. So I bought like $5 worth just to test it out. So let's build an AI chatbot with Flutter. Now just a quick overview of what we're about to build. We're going to build a chat app in Flutter. Now the only package we're going to really need is this HTTP package so that we can communicate to the Claude API. And you need to go to Claude to get your own API key. And so make sure you do that. And now let's get into the code. So I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and just to keep everyone on the same page, in my main function, I'm running my app, which is giving this scaffold. So you should just have a white blank app like this. Now, the first thing I need you to do is open up your terminal and let's add in these two packages. So flutter pub add HTTP and also provider. Cool, now the first thing I wanna do is let's create a new folder called chat. And I still want to maintain like a good folder structure and keep it clean and organized. So in my data folder, I'm going to create our file called cloud API service dot dot. So in this file, I'm going to handle all the cloud API stuff, starting with the constants. So a lot of this stuff you can just copy because I have written up the setup for this. And I'm just going to use an older API version and an older model as well. So you can update all of these values. So we've got the max tokens. And make sure the only thing we need is the API key that you get from cloud. So when we use this service, let's require this API key. And the main functionality that we want to do is just sending a message to the cloud API and returning some sort of response from the AI. So we're going to accept just a string of content for the parameter. And let's try to firstly make the request to the API. So this is where we're going to use the HTTP package. So let's import that at the top. And so we can give it the necessary information. Now, just to keep our code nice and organized and clean to read, for the headers and the body, I'm going to just separate the two out in a separate method. So, the first one is just to create the required headers for the Cloud API. So this stuff you can just copy because it's kind of specific to this API. So it's the content type, the API key, the Anthropic version, which is the API version that we had. And then let's format the request body according to the Cloud API specs. For the model, and let's just make sure to format this in the required structure. And that should be good to go. So these two things we just separated out just to make it look nice and clean. And so finally, we can check if the request was successful. And let's also handle it when it's unsuccessful. If it's all good, then we're just going to need to pass the response. So 
So just to write some comments here, we're going to pass the response and just is extract the part of the text that we need. Cool. And if it's unsuccessful, we're just going to throw some exceptions and we'll check out what the error is. Awesome, and that's it for the Cloud API service. Now let's create a new folder called model. And let's create our message. So this is what every message is gonna look, gonna look like. It's gonna have a content, and if it's the user or not, as well as the timestamp. So just a nice and simple message. And now we can create our presentation layer for all the UI stuff. So firstly, I'm just going to create my chat provider. Let's at the beginning get the API service. And we're going to store the messages and the loading status here as well. And so this class will just basically handle all the state and the UI for our app and basically just manage all the messages. When I send a message, firstly, I'm just going to prevent empty sends just to help it out. And then let's create the user message. And add it to our chat. And then we can update the UI. And let's try to send our message and receive the response from our API. Let's get the response message from the AI. and add it to the chat. And the content of this message should be the response. Cool, and if it's an error, then I'm just going to create an error message. So we can create a custom message here if you want. So let's just say, sorry, I encountered an issue and just display the error. Cool, and then at the end, we finished loading. Sweet, oops, and I forgot to just add the message to the chat. Okay, cool, and that's our chat provider. So we just have the fun stuff left. We just need to create our chat page. So this is just going to be the UI that we see. And firstly, in our main function though, Let's wrap our app in a change notifier provider and give it our chat provider that we created. Sweet. And then we want to have a chat page. So let's create that now. Sweet, so firstly, I'm going to need a text controller to access what the user typed. And so if you look at our scaffold in the body, I am going to use a column. So in the top section, we're just going to have the chat messages to take up most of the screen. 
and at the bottom we're going to have the user input box so at the top because it's going to be most of the screen i'm just going to use the expanded widget and then let's use a consumer to consume our information from our provider now if it's empty then i'm just going to put in some empty message like start a conversation And otherwise, we can display all the messages using a list view builder. So let's just get each individual message first by cycling through the index and return the text. Sweet, and if I refresh this, you can see the start a conversation. Now at the bottom, last thing we need is a text field. So let's put this in a row because on the left side, I want the text field. And then on the right side, we want the send button. So in this row as well, the text field, I want to fill most of the space. So let's say expanded. Now if you save this, I think it's at the very bottom. You can't really see it. But yeah, you can actually type in the text box already. So what I want you to do is you can actually wrap this entire column in a widget called a safe area. And this basically just helps it to just avoid any kind of difficult places in the, in the corners and around the notch and stuff. So now I can see my text field and you can type inside. And let's also include our button. Beautiful. So when the user types something in the text field to access what they typed, we need to give it our controller. And then if I click send, and let's make sure to only do this when it's not empty. So there is something to send. Then we want to go to our provider. I need my provider and then we can send the message. And let's also clear the controller while we're here. Sweet. Okay, let's try this out. Now I'm just going to send a message and it looks like you can see there, it's kind of working. Now it says, sorry, I encountered an issue, API error. So obviously I didn't use the actual API key. You can see here, this is where you need to put your API key that you need to get from Claude. So I'm going to put my one in right now and then let's test this out. You can say hello, and then it gives us a response. Sweet, so it's working. That is really cool. Now, just to finish this off, I'm going to make this look a little nicer. Let's create a chat bubble. And just accept a message for this. And firstly, I just want to fix up the alignment because if it's us, we want to be on the right side. And if it's not us, then we want to be on the left side. So we can come to the chat page and give it the chat bubble now. And whoops, we should also give the child to the chat bubble. And you can see there it is. So it's on the right and left side. So now I'm just going to finish off by decorating it just with the colors some green and some gray. Let's add some padding. The corners are looking super sharp so we can curve the corners. And we can control the color of the text as well. All right, it's looking really good. Now, one thing I want to include actually is in between here. So before the user input box, I want to have a loading indicator because that's going to be very helpful. So if it's loading, then just use a circular progress indicator.
So yeah, you can see if I send a message, then you can now see that there's the loading indicator, which makes the user experience much better. Cool, and that's it. That's how you make a AI chatbot with the API key. So that's the important thing is you just need this API key from Claude or you know ChatGPT, any AI provider, and we're good to go. So I feel like now there's so many cool things I could make, but if you made it this far into the tutorial, drop me a purple heart in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.